שבוע טוב, הגוטה בוך. Tonight is the Yorzeit, the anniversary of the passing of Rachel Emeino, the metric Rachel. Lechaim, Lechaim. Zchuta yaget aleinu, may her merit protect us. Lechaim, Lechaim. I'm going to tell story number 49 of the Shibche Abel Shentov, which is the earliest compilations of stories of the Baal Shem Tov. And tonight's story, I'm also going to look a couple of details mentioned in the chief work of compilation of, of, of uh, teachings of Baal Shem Tov, written obviously and posthumously, there is no book written by the Baal Shem Tov, the Keser Shem Tov. In it, the story is mentioned with greater detail than in the book Shibhe Abba Shem Tov. The story is called Rabbi Gershon and the Chacham of Tzfat. Tzfat, Safet, is a special holy city in northern Israel um, where the Mekubalim, the teachers of Kabbalah, gathered and set school. We have a, an alarm passing by as I mentioned the Mekubalim. Says the author of the book. I heard from Rab Pinchas Melamed. I don't know if Melamed is the last name of Rab Pinchas or he was a Melamed, a teacher. He was a Makurav. He was very close to the Magad Yesharim of the, of the Kehillah mentioned above, meaning Rab Lieb of Lodizen, who was the son of Rab Gershon. The author of this book always um, tells you how he comes to the story itself, who he heard it from and how it came to him. So, um, Rav Pincha says that it seems to him that the story happened in Tzfat, in the city of Tzfat. May it be uh, rebuilt soon in an hour days. There was uh, the Rav of this community, the head of the best in the Rav of the community, who in the language of the locals, meaning the Sephardim, the Kehillah of the Sephardi Jews, he was known as a Chacham. He was a good man and uh, he was very much dear to Rav Gershon. Once Rav Gershon found himself unable to um, purchase his needs for Shabbos, he was not able to, so he um, came to this Chacham and told him and uh, borrowed money for him for his uh, to buy the food and whatever he needed for uh, celebrating, for observing the Shabbos. One day later, um, it was very cold and um, Rab Gershon was uh, wearing a brustlak, which is like a um, half overcoat, just the upper part overcoat, thick, made of a cotton-like material to keep himself warm. And he went to uh, the um, Beth Medrash, to the house of study, to uh, pray in the morning. After the prayers, um, people st stay in the, in, the, in the shul to do their learning, their, their daily uh, shiurim. As is the custom of the Chachamim, the, the, the Talmud Chacham, the people who learn, they don't just leave the synagogue quickly, they stay and they learn for a while. So Rab Gershon was walking back and forth the house of study, smelling his tabak, his uh, spice box, and he had a, um, in the Brusla, he had a um, patechle, like a hanging uh, pocket, and he uh, pull from it a uh, kerchief and a uh, schlass beitel, a, uh, like a, a, I have here a uh, money, uh, a coin holder uh, bag fell off of it. So the ham that saw this happen and picked it up and realized he could feel that inside there were five coins, five tangible big coins. 
So he thought that this must be a dumim, red coins, meaning gold coins. And he was shocked. And he said to Rav Gershon, you told me you have no money for Shabbos. You needed to borrow money. So Rav Gershon says, I said the truth. No, you lied. I'm feeling the coins here. It just fell off of your pocket. You have this. You didn't need to borrow money for Shabbos. So the discussion began. Rav Gershon says, no, I did say the truth to you. I don't have money to, to, to buy my things for Shabbos. You are lying to me. You were lying and you're still lying. And by the Sephardim in uh, the community in Svaz, uh, Davar Sheker, a word of lie, was a very heavy transgression. They would not accept such a thing. And he couldn't understand what Rav Gershon is like putting his foot down in, in light of the evidence. <laughs> he had, was holding the bag in his hand, saying he doesn't have the money, and he's holding the bag with the money. So the discussion went on and on and started rising and rising. I mean, one moment, the Chacham jumped in front of the, um, the Aron HaKodesh, the, the Torah uh, Ark, and he said, I swear that Rav Gershon is lying. Rav Gershon jumped in front of him and in front of the whole community, declared him in Cherem, excommunicated, Shan, because he had done a false, um, uh, he had swore upon a falsehood. The Chacham accepted what uh, Rav Gershon was doing, not understanding the why. He took his shoes off because they were leather shoes and a person who is shunned is not allowed to wear mecherem, it's not allowed to wear leather shoes according to Shulchan Aruch. He goes home and he tells people what happened. Rav Gershon tells me he doesn't have money for Shabbos and he borrow based on that he doesn't have. And he has a bag with tangible coins that I can feel and then, when I call him on the lie, he puts me on cherem. So the people of the community came with the Chacham and asked Rav Gershon. And Rav Gershon said, why didn't he open the bag? There were no gold coins inside. There were coins that are only usable in Poland. They are not currency here. Just like the, the, the silverware that I have. Okay, I couldn't go to a store and buy with it. They, they won't accept it as currency. So, not having how to purchase for it for Shabbos, I had to borrow. So I did not lie. Once this is made clear and he opens the back and he shows inside what he had, then the Chacham apologized. So he immediately removed the Cherem from the Chacham. And that's the story. Wait. Very important point now. Pay attention. Rav Gershon receives a letter from the Baal Shem Tov. And the letter from the Baal Shem Tov, Baal Shem Tov says that I saw that there was a judgment on you up in uh, the supernal realms, in Eichal, in Shemaim. I had to go into the Kesar of Shem Tov and explain exactly where in Shemaim and where in the heavens he was going to be tried. And they were asking for death penalty because of the way in which you treated that Rav, that Chacham. That you put him on head and you jump to do this. The Baal Shem Tov says, I wanted to defend you. And as I wanted to enter the Heichal to make a case for you, the door was closed in my face. This is the letter that the Baal Shem Tov is writing to. But you came out innocent because I said that whatever you do, you do for the sake of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, for the sake of heaven. But from now on I ask you, don't be so heavy, don't be so stark. Don't treat people like that, don't put them in heaven. Arab Gershon wrote back to the Baal Shem Tov, very surprised, not understanding what happened. In those days, they didn't have long distance communications, immediate distance. There was no phones, there was no WhatsApp. How would the Balsham Tov write the letter the day that these things happened? He saw it all. He really saw it all in Shemaim. 
may we understand to judge each other favorably may we learn to be forgiven even before something happens may we let go of all the things that bother us and we should all merit to see Geula, to see Mashiach, to see redemption based simply on sheer love for one another. L'chaim, Shavua Tov, Agutavah.